if this is part of your generation, and it's near the end of our generation, but um, sometimes we would send tapes to people, like with telling, like talking in a tape, instead of writing a letter, you'd record a tape, and then you'd send the tape, and the person would listen to the tape, and then they would do a tape, and they'd return it, and then you'd listen to the tape. Do you remember that? He's not my real grandfather, he's my, he was with my grandma um, when my mom was 14, they got together. My mom had me at 17 and um, she was like a single mom. So, she, and she wanted to get her education because she was still quite young. So my mom asked if I could go live with them until she went and got an education. So they said yes. And so a lot of my young child, like my young childhood memories are in the bush with my grandparents. And um, so I, I have like fond memories of that. And then uh, when I had to go to school, like my grandma said, like Renata's ready to go into kindergarten. You know, you should take her back so she could go to school. So my mom did and I went, I left my grandparents after that. And I'd see them in the summers and stuff, but I really changed because I got then exposed to city life, right? So then I, um, I kind of lost that connection with with the with uh, the bush that I had growing up, and as a teenager, you rebel against everything. So I rebelled against that. I started documenting his journey, where he's been, and and that kind of stuff. So so far, it's three maps. So in nineteen fourteen, January twenty fifth, Edward Arthur Edward Laroc was born at Fort Fitzgerald. People have written about him in different ways. Like he's referenced in a book. Um, someone wrote a children's book about him, uh, about his life, and uh, he's tried documenting, and I think he bought, he's always wanted a book. And so when he, um, I became an actor and that kind of stuff, and so when he died, it seemed very natural that I'd be the one to receive his stories. And um, that was over three years ago now that he's passed, and... Uh, and I really missed him, so I had his tapes, but I, I couldn't bring myself to listen to them. I didn't want to hear his voice. And I was lucky. I hit Gene River. Jumped over a couple of sandbars and got in. You never know what you're going to get when you put in a tape. Because my grandpa was 96, he was stone deaf in one ear. He had huge hands, so I didn't even know if he knew how to use a tape recorder. I didn't know if there would be anything on any of those tapes or how many things would be on there. And Thankfully, there was about 11 and a half hours of material. A couple of the tapes is my grandfather, who obviously never mailed it, uh, was to his buddy Tommy Thompson, who was the his... Poem. The po The poet, right. He was an RCMP, and he had guided... Uh, Tommy Thompson and him had traveled through a lot of the Barren Lands and stuff together, and they became really good friends, and Tommy Thompson wrote poetry about my grandfather and my grandmother. And uh, so after Archie stopped... Uh, doing that and Tommy went back south um, they would send each other tapes so I have one tape where Tommy Thompson is like hey Archie and talking about his life and then he would put on country music from the radio station because Archie loved country music I knew I knew Arch I knew my grandpa loved country music he used to love watching westerns so I'm not surprised what surprised me is that he would tell jokes like there's a couple, not a lot of them, but there's a couple tapes where he, he just tells these jokes to people and he laughs at them. And I go, I just never knew that he told jokes. Like, that's hilarious to me. His life, no one lived, very few people lived that life. So he actually documents a piece of history that isn't really told in, in our, in our Canadiana uh, history. Because he was Métis, because he was one of the last dog patrol um, guides and, and he knew the Barren Lands better than anybody. Like he helped map out um, the Barren Lands. So uh, Tommy Thompson was a bit of a poet on top of being an RCMP and he became really good friends with my grandfather so he wrote poetry about him and this one's called The Man of the North. So here goes. 
The gray wolves howl and the huskies growl on the trails of the Arctic zone. The night owl hoots and the rabbit scoots and the pine trees sob and moan. To the north shore of Great Slave Lake there came a man one day, a man of steel with his wife Cecile, the king of Bolio Bay. A moose they found on their hunting ground and had moose nose and liver, a treat so rare when cooked with care by the queen of Bolio River. A man of fame in the trapping game, he was a tough old hard rock codger. With his old guitar, he was known afar for his songs of Jimmy Rogers. His mark is found on the barren ground where he knew the trail so well, and his campfire's glow on the Arctic snow seemed to cast its lonely spell. He knew this land like the back of his hand, his trails where few would follow, for he traveled far by the northern star in his search for a new tomorrow. This man of the north that I've traveled with was as tough as a granite rock, this man of fame and known by name as Edward Archie LaRock. <laughs> it is pretty it is pretty beautiful. I think it captures an era for sure. I've always been a nomad my whole life, so but having them in that time of my life, I'm always grounded to that. When I got older and I started reconnecting and really kind of looking at my life on a whole level, I uh, realized how incredibly special that experience was. The old hometown looks the same as I step down from the train. And there to meet me is my mama and papa. Down the lane I look Mary, hair of gold and lips like cherries, it's good to touch the green, green grass of home. Yes, they'll all come to meet me, arms are reaching, smiling sweetly, it's good to touch the green, green grass of home. 